Where is a place called home? Where, where, where did this title come from? Where did this story come from? A place called home is, it's in your heart now. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh dang it, dude. And the um, mic is on him. <laughs> Hi, I'm Nathan Bannister. Hi, I'm Adam Bova, and we're both uh, producers of A Place Called Home. Mm -hmm. um, so our director, Kyle, uh, actually wrote uh, the story, um, and I really think it w just came from a sense of... Um, well, he's told us a couple of times, it's kind of a little morbid. Um, he had always thought uh, what life would be like if he were to lose his wife. Um, and that's kind of where this story started, um, is you know what would have been the struggles that he had faced? Um, how would he have tackled being the father of two girls? Um, how would he have, um, you know, Kyle, and, and I, I think captures pretty clearly a lot of men and, you know, we're very proud. We like to be able to take care of our families on our own, but sometimes we need to ask for that help. Um, and so that's kind of where the script and the story came from, um, was just exploring those themes of fatherhood, um, manhood, and, um, you know, being there for your children and taking care of them and, and asking for help. Where you ask for that help is obviously a big part of the story and where things may go awry. Mm -hmm. As far as the morbid side, the difficult parts of the story, um, how much fun is it to produce a film that deals with heroics and action and a lot of dangerous things? Yeah, I think um, as a guy, there's always going to be a little testosterone. Like, you know, <laughs> if we had the bigger budget, there would be the car chase scene and, you know, like a little more fisticuffs. But um, I think that with this, we really wanted to do focus more on the war of the heart. We've seen action movies, but there's so little that deals with uh, I wouldn't say sensitivities of men, but the heart of man, where we are wild. There is uh, mankind is just this creature that is at war, and it's not always outside. We are sometimes the perpetrators of our own victimization, you know. So he has to. Our, our main character has grown up without so much. He has grown up destitute, without a father, never really had anything. So there's a whole bunch of backstory that Kyle is like ingrained in us, so that when we watch the movie, you know, you just know this guy having this home is everything. It's the stability he never had. So losing that, he will go to any length. It is purely a film of desperation and survival on his end. And there's moments of him growing up for the first time as a man by becoming child like his child, you know, and it's a it's a love story between him and his kids, you know, him falling in love with his kids and just kind of accepting himself as a man and being able to be a provider, not just of a of his family and like the surface level stuff, but being open. And it's so hard for men sometimes to be able to open up and be vulnerable that it's kind of like, should we deal with this? And so um, so we really got together. Kyle has such a heart for his family. He can't even be here. He just had a kid yesterday, <laughs> literally yesterday. So uh, he just, he wants to be there for his family and that will always take priority over everything. And that's, you can absolutely see a lot of Kyle in this film. His heart, his heart for man, his heart for his family um, and who he wants to be. He just wants to be a good guy to his family. He's not trying to save the world. He's just trying to save his family you know and so um, and a lot of that is seen through Kyle's heart just in how he deals with us how he deals with his actors he really wants to be relational and I feel like a lot of things can be accomplished in our worlds if we just are a little more relational a little less combative a little less divisive and just try to find the heart in the other you know and just be there for each other so and that's what our actor learns as well speaking of combat um, the oldest daughter is dynamic in this she's in, she's so good can y'all talk a bit about having children on set? What that was like? Was it difficult? How much fun was it? I mean, it, there's definitely yeah. challenges with that. Um, we were, uh, yeah, time <laughs> being the big one. Um, you know, we were working with SAG, so we were following all of the union uh, rules and everything about working with child actors. And, um, you know, just beyond that, they're, you know, younger people. They don't have the attention span as, of an adult. They don't, uh, you know, they get burnt out 
out a little bit easier. Um, and so you can't have them on set for, you know, 14 hours a day because they won't give you anything um, other than a screaming mess. Um, but, but on top of that is SAG has all these rules. And this guy was very important to make sure that all rules were followed to the T. And we were so efficient just with like timing and stuff with him. Kyle was very great, like working with him, just like, if we don't have the time, we don't have the time. We'll get what we get, you know, move on. But um, we had done so much pre-planning and stuff just to make sure that we could get what we needed, gave ourselves some cushion. He especially, him and Kyle both just like killed it with the planning. And when you plan for kids on set, it does become a little more, you know, a little bit more manageable. And I was tight with the parents. So me and McCarran would just like hang out and like goof off and she's a total goofball. I hope oh, she, she never is. changes. Oh. Um, and so when SAG actually came on set just to make sure everything's good with the actors, all just not just their SAG, but also the kids, like all the stuff, you know, uh, McCarran came out and ran up, jumped on my lap. She's like, what were all those questions for? And I was like, I don't know, just probably being legal or something. And, uh, and the lady came out and she was like, okay, yeah, we're fine. Like, so like, she, I think when you, again, back to relationship, when you actually show that you care, the actors actually give a whole lot more back. So um, this was absolutely like a totally relationship based film. And it, I think it showed through how we treated the actors, how the actors wanted to show off Kyle's script. Like they were just yeah. exceptional. Well, films. and I, um, McCarran was probably what, uh, 12, 13, oh, yeah. 11, somewhere around in there when we filmed. And I have never seen an actress as prepared yeah. as she was. And even, not even for her age. Um, just the notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She showed up day one on set um, with her script in a notebook binder, um, tabs outlining all of her scenes, her lines highlighted. She even had questions in the margins of stuff she needed to ask Kyle about and her characterization. And I mean, she had done her legitimate homework um, as you would expect any actor to do. And she's just a little kid. Um, and so she was absolutely amazing to work with um, and a very, very professional on set. So the babies were a little harder to give direction to. And I'm just, <laughs> they looked fine. Yeah, yeah they were fine. They were hilarious. <laughs> um, where did you guys shoot and how long did you shoot? I, I feel like it maybe not a long shoot no we were we shot for four guy, weeks long shoot. yeah wow. we, we shot for four weeks uh, six day weeks so 24 days total um, and um, we were filming in uh, Russellville Kentucky uh, which is just north of Nashville just kind of right across the border uh, into Kentucky hometown of the director so there's a lot of grassroots there's a lot of memories there so this was like it's almost like he was presenting nostalgia in a certain a slice of life that he actually grew up with. So there's a lot of characters in there that may or may not be based on real people that are in Russellville. So yeah. um, a lot of good people, a lot it's of amazing fiction. people, but it's yeah, fiction. it's all fictional. But, <laughs> uh, but yeah. This do was, you think it may have been cathartic for Kyle then to do this project? I think it was him showing his heart and like the message that he wishes uh, to convey to other men, other fathers of you know, uh, taking care of your family and how to do that, and that it's okay to um, rely on others to to take care of family. You know, um, family is just the smallest component of what we call community. Um, and but without the larger community, it's hard for family to survive. Um, and so I think that's kind of what Kyle was. That's that was the catharsis uh, for him was um, this idea um, of community and family of fatherhood and, and um, single parenting and all of that, which, you know, Kyle, again, just had a baby. He and his wife just had a baby. So all that's, you know, imaginings of his. So yeah. fresh. <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's cathartic for men and, and people that are just still growing up that don't always have everything figured out. And he allows those kind of characters to play. There's a lot other characters in there that still need to grow up too. And it's just, it's just nice to see somebody on screen screen actually become more of who they always kind of wanted to be, you know, and I think we're all in that place. And I think visionaries like Kyle need to be 
shown more. They, they need to be not pedestaled, but definitely like people like Kyle, just who have a heart for people that understand that we are all kind of broken, but that we can make moves forward and, and we're not stuck, that we can fight for what is good and wholesome and, uh, and loving. Yeah. What does it mean to be at another festival here in the South? And they're great. Being able to open the festival, being a big part of kicking off yeah. this year. Such an honor. It was, yeah, this is, I think, the yeah. second. Did we open Knoxville, too? I think we opened three. So, yeah. This I is, think this is our third Yeah, this opener. is our, our third yeah. opener with this film. Um, we've been all over the Southeast uh, with this. This is truly a Southern story. Yeah. Um, it's one of the things we were kind of looking for when we were um, casting um, was people with authentic Southern-sounding uh, voices. Um, yeah, you first, hear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The <laughs> first thing Kyle said is, when you read this, when he showed us the script, he was like, think like... Southern Gothic. And we're like, <laughs> okay, okay, all right. So Dan Romer, okay, like playing the music in the background. Yeah, so we were we were very, you know, focused on that. And um, this is a Southern story, but it's, I think, also relevant um, for, you know, the entire U.S. and, and world, really, um, because it does focus on fatherhood and on being a dad. Um, and we don't get to see a lot of that. Uh, we don't get to see a lot of, you know, single fathers in film. Right. Um, um, and so uh, it, it, it was nice. That's kind of what attracted me to this story was being able to share that kind of story um, with the audience. So, yeah, it was crazy because like I don't have kids yet. I've always wanted them. I feel like I'm a pretty good Funkel, uh, the fun uncle who still has no kids. <laughs> no, but the I think that it's like we all were a little fra afraid of down the line. We're going to have kids, too. Do we have what it takes? And so <laughs> there were certain like choices that like our actor Ben would make. And you're like, oh, gosh. Would, Would that, that be? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, uh, I need to grow up, you know, so. And I obviously need to grow up a little more. But um, don't we all? No, but it's it was just like, yeah, it was just very powerful for, for me. To, it gives me hope. Like, I might not get it right at first. But I think in time, with a good, healthy community, with people that look out for each other, bros that keep you in check, but also push you to greatness, um, with family, with, with community that kind of gives you a little leeway, but also expects more of you. And I think that's the healthiest place to be. Is yeah. it's just a little. We just need the room to grow, and um, and I think everybody can relate to just give me a break, you know, kind of thing. And so, well, yeah, we we actually had a lady in the screening the other day yes. here at this festival um, who was like, you know, thank you so much for sharing this story of this grief of this loss. Um, you would have to watch the film to know what we're talking about. Um, but she she was like, you know, that resonated with me as someone who has gone through this um, and you know it's very nice to, to be able to see this on screen um, and so there is something for everyone in this film uh, and that was you know another thing that kind of brought all of uh, everyone that worked on this film that brought them to the project is they could see um, the heart of this film and um, that we don't see enough of this on screen and it's a worthy topic to be talked about it is interesting that same woman I was actually sitting a little bit down the way from her and I heard the you know, the sniffles and I look over and I'm like, oh, this is like touching her. Like, this is great. And then like, I, we've seen the film numerous yeah, times. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm like, oh no. <laughs> and I just started crying all over. I've seen it so many times, but like Ben and McCarran just like, it's such a beautiful film. Like it's so hopeful. And I have the fact that I'm crying after a film that I've seen so many times, I'm like tearing up now, but it's like, it's just, it's just, I grew up a little bit and I now know, oh, it worked. I can be vulnerable. I can break down a little bit and not always have to be just, you know, macho or whatever, whatever the, you know, situation calls for. But I can actually be vulnerable in the moment and actually be very human. And it's just nice. You know, it's, it's very freeing. And so, yeah. I love that you said it can, it may be universal enough to, to expand out from the yeah. South. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what is the goal with the film? Any other festival stops you can mention or talk about? Um, we're kind of wrapping up our festival um, circuit right now now um, so we are um, actively in search for distribution do we have one more 
We have one more. Okay. We, the, we know of. Okay. I um, am not keeping I don't know if we can say it. I don't know. Oh, Stay tuned. <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> so we're excited. So that's that's good. But um, yeah, but yeah, we're, we're working we're, on distribution now. Yeah, we're working on distribution, uh, trying to get that um, on streaming services uh, so that, uh, you know, a wider audience can see that. Um, so we're just in negotiations right now. So hopefully we'll have an announcement soon. Uh, you should follow us on Facebook, um, which I think is just a place called home. Um, the website is a place called home film, uh, dot com. Uh, so you guys can uh, just go out there and stay up to date with us and follow us. And I think there's an Instagram too, but yeah. I don't remember what that is off the top of my head. If you see a beautiful photo, that's very charming. And, uh, that's probably it. Yeah. You found it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's a good song. Yeah. Boy. <laughs> guys, thank you for, for coming to the festival. Um, I think there's definitely a reason why it was the opening night. Thank you. And, um, I can't wait to see what more you guys do and what Kyle can bring for us. It yeah. was yeah. what I didn't expect in the film made it so much more powerful. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for saying that. We uh, There's definitely some stuff in the works for, for all of us. A lot of really good things coming down the line, but yeah, stay tuned. Adam Bova, check him out. Kyle Forlton, uh, T-H-O-R-L-T-O-N. Uh, K-I-E-L, right? K-I-E-L, yes. I always forget that. I'm like natural for me now. But um, but yeah, keep, keep in touch with those names. Like, good things are going to happen. Yeah, yeah. And with Nathan Bannister. Oh, thank you. One N. <laughs> I love it. So thank you, gentlemen. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys.